Hello, good morning. Uh, I'm Bernard Mandiburu, and uh, I will present uh, quickly on this last year's uh, developing professional VR headset at uh, two companies. And um, so, uh, up. The uh, plan for my uh, presentation is I will give you a little bit of background of my personal journey in uh, virtual reality, and then about like more globally what have been our journey in virtual reality as an industry, in the uh, point of view of uh, uh, HMD maker, and also what I've learned making this HMD, and what I've learned using these HMDs, and have a quick look into the. Uh, what I see for the future for the coming years. Uh, and uh, if you would like, uh, I will uh, indulge into a quick presentation of uh, this year's uh, journey for me. Um, the, um, with uh, mainly three period before getting into 3D, 3D times on VR times. Uh, the, uh, for many of you, uh, thinking about VR in the 90s must uh, uh, bring memories of maybe a dozen of pixels and a handful of uh, vectors. Uh, for me, it started in 1995, uh, uh, playing with a, a dactyl nightmare on, uh, on a PC. Uh, we were connecting the uh, computers together with a serial network. And it was the, the great time of the zero degree of freedom when uh, head trackers were definitively not accessible to, uh, to students. Uh, uh, these years I had a chance to work for a few years uh, in a UCLA lab and they had a, a VR headset uh, on, a, on a shelf, uh, persuaded that uh, it was not possible to plug it into a, a PC. And uh, it was my first exploration into VR using uh, what would become the uh, DASO VR tools and uh, also a little bit of uh, EON tools. And, uh, but uh, the, uh, we, we, the main issue into these years was that uh, triggering uh, user attention was very difficult. The uh, amount of work to get uh, your data through an HMD was uh, too important for researchers that would have a, a very good benefit from uh, just a, a 2D or 3D flat display. Uh, the uh, uh, VR uh, real work started for me when I was at, uh, at Volfoni. Uh, we were making 3D glasses for uh, cinema and, uh, and VR. Uh, we developed uh, a full uh, suite of uh, virtual reality glasses and uh, we started to integrate more and more function. Uh, Kurt talked a little bit about these glasses yesterday. We started by the optical component of them, having the best uh, fil uh, liquid crystal and uh, uh, then get to into the electronics, providing you guys with the ability to connect via radio and to use multi-channel and to fine tune the timings of every glasses individually. And, uh, and then we went into uh, integrating the, uh, the tracking and uh, the audio link, and we were at that phase of the project in R&D when we realized that we were basically making a single uh, pixel uh, HMD. And uh, so that was the joke about this. That was a nickname of the glasses. It was a single pixel HMD. When all of a sudden the uh, VR headset uh, uh, hype started with the Oculus uh, quick starter. So that, from that point we knew that we needed more than one pixel. And we incubated a project at, at Volfoni. Uh, that project uh, became the, uh, I need to check in my time, never mind. Uh, the, uh, that project became the, uh, um, sorry, I didn't, I, I totally forgot to start my timer. Yes, perfect, thank you. <gasps> 10 minutes, okay. 
faster. Uh, so we uh, we developed what was the uh, Star VR HMD. Uh, in a few years, uh, we went from uh, a cardboard uh, science uh, experiment, uh, science fair experiment, into uh, what was arguably the best headset at that time with a very wide field of view and an extremely uh, a clear picture thanks to uh, amazing lenses that unfortunately did not make it to the market for the uh, 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 for the anecdote the uh, headset project was killed the very week we were shipping the headset to our customers and probably some of you in the room I'm sorry about that and uh, but that was obviously not our choice in the company to uh, to cancel the project. Uh, then from that on, uh, I jumped to another uh, extraordinary uh, VR headset that you know, um, I think most of you have tested it this week here at the, uh, at the conference. And uh, so that's the uh, XR headset from Vario. Uh, the uh, story behind that headset is that that's the team that initially worked on the HoloLens and uh, they decided to make their own uh, VR project, and that's the, um, uh, the Vario uh, headset. Uh, I'll get back a little bit uh, into these uh, two headsets. Uh, if we try to have a look at what was our journey over the, uh, uh, these years with VR, uh, the year 2000, to, uh, to my understanding, was mostly about shrinking the supercomputer, uh, going from uh, uh, in my case, uh, in uh, UCLA, uh, they had a uh, SGI reality engine. It was a uh, 10 uh, full ace, 19 uh, inch rack. When they removed it, uh, they had the space to build a computer that they tried to get into the 500 fastest computer uh, list. So to give you the, uh, an idea of the uh, size of the beast. And uh, the work was to try to replace this with a bunch of uh, NVIDIA GPU in a, in a, in a computer. Uh, it worked. Uh, we could absolutely have uh, amazing stereoscopic images either on the HMD or on a power wall from, uh, from Megdine, but that's when the, uh, uh, the effort to bring the uh, researcher to use that kind of device uh, would have taken years, and that's uh, when the uh, 3D movie making started to uh, invade Hollywood, so I, uh, I jumped both to the uh, um, content creation. And uh, when I came back to uh, VR uh, five years later, it was the year 2010, and then we had definitively shrank the uh, cluster computing into uh, a workstation. And uh, I think that what we've been doing for over 10 years was to shrink the uh, cave into an HMD. And uh, the, uh, the context was that uh, we were in the uh, uh, sub $1,000 uh, HMD, but you can't really make a professional headset at, uh, at that price. Nonetheless, it creates an ecosystem for professional HMDs that can be up to $10,000, provided that you have a clear benefit. And uh, for, uh, uh, for an engineer, not to have to timeshare a cave in the next building, but having a cave on his desktop is definitively, uh, again, in, in productivity provided that you have a continuity in the work space, in the work habit. That's what we currently bring with, uh, with Vario. Uh, what has been funny in these years is, uh, yeah, so it's a, this play is mad scientist fair uh, opportunity because like a, we, we basically want an 8K camera, an 8K display per eye, big as your uh, uh, watch. So uh, it's, uh, quite a fit. It has to run on battery, obviously, and do not generate any heat. Uh, thousands of lumens and no heat, please. And uh, it's also a very interesting, uh, like I said, a world of startup. Uh, it's not that hard to make a good headset. It's incredibly difficult to have all the software partners interested into your headset and spending months of programmers to adapt their software to your headset. It's a surprisingly important part of the battle. 
And obviously, the uh, GPU is always the uh, limiting factor. Uh, people keep asking me what GPU we need, and I said, the next one. Uh, where are we going now from there? Uh, now we need to shrink the headset itself, because uh, uh, we, we want to shrink into, into glasses. I mean, can we? Can we shrink a headset into glasses? There are two main challenges there. The first one is, uh, can we outpower uh, uh, the ambient light? Uh, can you make uh, additive uh, light displays that work outside in the sun uh, in Los Angeles on a Sunday afternoon? Good luck. Uh, and the FCC may have a say about the safety of such glasses. Uh, the other reason, but, but we, we probably can, using a mask, uh, a layer of uh, LC mask to obscure the world. Uh, the second reason is the infinity of depth plane in the real world. Uh, my XR headset has the uh, uh, good grace of having only one XR uh, uh, focus plane. But do we really need an infinity of focus plane? After all, any uh, visual experience is, uh, artificial visual experience is based on subsampling. Can we subsample the, uh, the, the focus plane? And what are the focus planes that we actually use? They are usually perpendicular to our vision and flat and discrete. We have a book, a display, a computer. So, Maybe. We, we, my, my take is it will take three years to see credible products that give us uh, uh, the ability to focus the uh, artificial image uh, coherently with the real world. Uh, about this credible product in three years, uh, believe it or not, it's only this year that the VR headset industry discovered that more law does not apply to optics. So, if we are in for the bad news, it doesn't apply either to batteries, thermodynamics, fan speed, airflow, next train, mechanical sturdiness, and basically 95% of what make a HMD. And um, so, uh, no. Uh, what were the technical challenges that we had uh, developing all these professional headsets? It's basically uh, one challenge, which is uh, uh, whatever you increase, it would, be, would it be the uh, field of view or the resolution, you increase the pixel count. If you do that in a smart way, you, it's probably a factor of three. But a factor of three in the rendering that's already at his uh, limit uh, requires a smart solution. And this smart solution is obviously foveated rendering. Do not make pixels that nobody see. It's probably not a bad option not to make pixels that you don't, your client doesn't care about. And so, uh, but, also, deploying foveated VR, uh, uh, we have learned that sometimes brute force rendering is the elegant solution because uh, it's not that simple to, uh, uh, to have actual gain with foveated rendering. A uh, very quick, quick view on how we did uh, the, uh, wide field, the wide field of view in the uh, VR, uh, Star VR. It was by actually, uh, so slanting the lenses and the display on a 135 degree, and uh, cutting both left and right first row into uh, front and uh, side. And uh, just for the fun of it, when uh, Lionel announced the uh, project to do such a headset on means to be seen, uh, Leaky Palmer was like, that will never work. So uh, never say never. Uh, how did we do, uh, how did they do uh, 60 pixel per degree, uh, uh, give it to Cesar or to, from Cesar, uh, at uh, Vario, uh, but with a beam splitter. Every eye, uh, every on each side of the D, of the HMD on the far right, you can see the uh, part of the HMD. There is a, a half degree mirror, a half mirror, 45 degree, that optically combines the uh, the lenses, the, uh, the images. And so quickly, what are the uh, uh, 
less and learn from that uh, research development. Two, the first one is, uh, I mean, the main one is image quality is a weak point chain, and every point is weak. And which means that every time you improve one, you reveal another one, if not every other one, weakness. And uh, so if you make a headset, do never improve the lenses. You kill yourself. And also, uh, time is of essence, and nobody cares. Uh, the, uh, sorry, I've wrong word. If you improve your lens, uh, what do you see the moment? We, on the VR, on the uh, Star VR, we had a better uh, lens uh, making machine. Just having a better projection tool, you reveal the screen door effect, the uh, color uh, diffraction, the shaders uh, uh, error. You have to call back the people that make the software for your uh, uh, headset, say, oh, I just made you look back. You need to redo your, uh, your renders and all of this. And uh, the other important point is we have many, many, many sensors in the HMD, okay? Uh, your head position, your head motion, your hand position, uh, uh, the real world video, and the air position. All of these are relative to the headset because they are measured in the headset. If they don't synchronize perfectly, you don't have data. I don't care to know that my hand is there proper versus my head if I don't know where my head is. And if I don't have proper synchronization between those two information, they have no relationship. So you need a wall clock that command every part of your HMD. And none of these solution maker have thought in his design that he would have to follow an external clock. Or yes, sometimes, but NDA. And so, uh, quickly, and I apologize for being a, bit, a little bit long, uh, what do I want to uh, be able to shop in the next years to improve my HMD? Uh, we need, uh, we, we know that uh, artificial intelligence will bring us a lot of progress and robustness in tracking. Uh, we want to track your hand, your eyes, the world, the object. We have so many things to track, and tracking is not a trivial question. Dynamic lenses. Uh, we, can we have some dynamic lenses that uh, adjust the, uh, the convergence point uh, before NVIDIA solves the uh, interference lenses complexity? And uh, so, uh, because that may take some years. We want edge computing. There is a lot of promise in edge computing. Uh, I'm waiting to see the actual delivery uh, without latency and packet loss. But, uh, and uh, best uh, for the last point, obviously uh, solve the heat and power consumption of all of this uh, because uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, fixing uh, issues in VR is uh, just put a bigger fan. And that's my conclusion. Thank you very much.